nearly half the country is in lockdown. So houses are predicted to go up 16%. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because, well, this is going to be an interesting one to look at. An article with predictions that housing is to go up 16% here in Australia. Now, let's just refresh ourselves with a few things before we have a look at the current property prices and the arguments as to why it's going to surge up to, well, 16%. Now, we've had a recession. We had a recession. Our GDP, and I'll bring this chart up here, our GDP, you know, fell for two quarters. We can see it there in this chart. And then we've been growing since then. There you go. So GDP is growing. But but the government did do this little tiny thing. They, well, they have stimulated the economy significantly. We're looking at nearly $1.3 trillion worth of debt. By 2024, guys. That's state and federal government combined. So they've pumped the economy. They've pumped it. And what do they pump? Well, they pump houses. Home builder. Here. 150 grand. You've got to spend minimum to get $15,000. It's inflated the cost of everything. I know I'm doing a renovation at the moment. We saw lumber get more expensive. Bunnings have shortages. The government has just... Housing is their piñata that they hit to stimulate the economy. And you can see it here in the home uh, dwelling approvals. You can see just the significant growth there in building approvals. Look at that. It's starting to finally finally taper off. 15,000 for one month may be the peak. Now, if we jump back to previous years, we can see that's that's like two months worth of approvals. It's double what it was at some points in time. It was bouncing between ten and seven and a half thousand dollars. So it's juiced the market. People are having delays in getting projects done. They've really, you know, they've intervened. And a lot of people are buying, you know, moving to the country. They're buying houses. We saw that. If we, hang on, I just need to bring up this chart here. If we look at the property, we can see this is national housing. You can see the growth there. This is including the national, including capitals and the regions. And if we jump up here, you know, this Sydney, all I want to show you is just the increase in the grass. But we look here at a regional example. Boom! There you go. In uh, Mwollomba, down on the Gold Coast. Oh, sorry, Maryborough, down on the Gold Coast. Uh, down south of the Gold Coast, northern New South Wales. Look at that growth. There is definitely a lot of people driving, uh, moving to the regions. But also, when we talk about property, guys, this growth isn't universal. This is an example. This is the Red Rooster Goat Cheese line. You know, the posh suburbs on the coast and the inner west. Apartment price growth hasn't been the same. So when they're making these predictions of these claims, well, we've got to see. So um, remember, remember, we had all of this economic and GDP growth. A lot of that was fueled also by government uh, JobKeeper keeping businesses going. And insolvencies, which we'll look at at another video today, are also starting to rise. So let's have a look at the current asking prices for property, everyone, which we quickly looked at anyway. But we'll look at it a little bit closer just here we go. We can see what's our all, you know, all houses. There you go. Here we go. 198. And uh, we're sitting at 900, 973. We'll include the regions. That drops down to about six. And we're going up there. There you go. So the regions are still a bit cheaper, but they're heating up, everyone. So let's have a look at this prediction of a, well, house prices to surge 16%. With all of that in mind, with the fact that lockdowns are. You know, are growing. This article is just from today, everyone, or you know, yesterday when I upload this video. So this, they're aware of all of these lockdowns and all of these issues. Aussie house prices to surge sixteen percent this year. Well, is this compared to last year when we had a bit of a dip? We, you know, when prices were were kind of you know, tapering a little bit. We saw that in twenty nineteen. You know, they're going down, and you know, so there's still room to grow. Uh, in 2021. Lockdowns, border closures, and working from home have all helped Aussies save for deposits, which is expected to drive home prices up even further. So it's it's these lockdowns. It's these housing lockdowns 
you know, I'm joking about it. Maybe we don't need mortgage keeper guys. Maybe they'll just be calls for housing lockdowns. That's what's going to happen. Credit agency Fitch said low interest rates in Australia have also started encouraging investors into the housing market, potentially pricing out first home buyers. Government programs such as support for first time buyers in Australia have also incentivized incentivized purchases, the Fitch ratings report said. Well, you've got you can get a home with a five percent deposit and the government will guarantee it. They'll they'll pay for the mortgage lender's insurance. You can go in with a two percent deposit if you're a single family. Everyone. This is it, it's housing. Where is the political incentive to allow for a correction? On either side of politics. Lending to first home buyers in Australia made up around a quarter of overall lending in March 2021, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. That's around 10% higher than four years ago. Previously, Fitch anticipated Australian home prices would rise around 12% in 2021, but they are now anticipated they they now anticipate it will rise up to 16%. See, here's the thing. There'll be calls for Shorten to get in. Oh, no, not Shorten, Albanese. We'll see if Albanese lasts to the next election. But if we do get a Labour government, and if they do come on the table with you know removing of negative gearing, and then we start to see a correction in house prices, how do you think people will vote at the next election? Do you think they'll be able to keep negative gearing gone? Or will there be a huge push in people who are in property to, put, to reinstate the status quo? Another reason for the rise in home prices is lockdowns because hybrid work situations mean there is high demand for housing outside the city centres. This is showing you the, the difference in our economy. There's some people that are doing well. Rachel was at a, a party the other day and she was talking to another mo- mother and this mother was, was explaining how her husband was a gamer and did World of Warcraft. And Rachel said, oh, my sister uh, does MMOs as well. Uh, but she doesn't do World of Warcraft, she can't afford it. And this lady couldn't seem to understand how spending, what, 20 bucks a month on a game isn't something someone could afford. She had to explain it to her three times, going, you know, the woman's going, but it's only $20, it's only this. And Rachel was saying, yes, can't afford it. My sister can't afford it. You know, it's $20 a month. This is the thing. I think there's a big divide here in Australia, and I think it's just going to keep growing. There's going to be people who have not been impacted at all by any of these lockdowns. And then there are others who have. Not everyone can work from home. Hybrid working looks likely to become the norm for at least the, this, uh, for at least the next year, as the, does the desire for more space and the acceptance of longer commutes, Fitch said. So Aussie home prices ticked up 1.9% in the month of June, recent CoreLogic data revealed, bringing annual growth in the 2020 financial year to an eye-watering 13.5%. Remember when we were talking about corrections, when the RBA was modeling a 40% correction, the impact of that, when the banks were warning of a 20%, 30% correction, you know what it was for. It was to stimulate, it was to stimulate, guys, this it was to justify the conservative government just going crazy with the spending machine. That's what I think it was done for. I think it was the media to get the fear going, to scare the politicians. We're not in a free market, everyone. We're in a market with central in, with well, government intervention, significant government intervention. They pick the winners and choosers. And the winners that they've picked is anyone in the housing sector, anyone in the mining sector. Is that fair? Is that the right way to go? Well, that's the question you need to ask. One issue I have with it, one fundamental issue, is that it, well, it reduces the economic complexity of our country. And I know I always show the OEC, so we're looking at Harvard Atlas today. They've ranked us at 87th in the world. This is to do with the complexity of our economy. Sure, we're an advanced nation, but try and get anything manufactured here. Try and specify products locally made, not imported. It's bloody difficult. Most things are imported. Most things that we manufacture are rather simple or just assembling things overseas. Because fundamentally, why would you bother? Why would you start a business, put up with the red tape, hire the people here in Australia, deal with the 
you know, the, the environmentalist politics, the expensive rates and council fees, the pain in the ass of building a facility, and then power that costs a fortune. Why would you deal with any of that when you can just buy a house, push for negative gearing, and make more money? And that's why our economic complexity is going lower and lower and lower every time, guys. Dwelling values in each single capital city grew over the blockbuster year, with Darwin making the most meteoric growth at 21%, followed by the nation's capital of Canberra at 18.1%. ABS data shows that Aussies borrowed $75 billion for the first four months of 2020, compared to a record $48 billion in the first four months of 2020. What? I'm assuming that's 2021, as opposed to 2020. According to a finder survey, the vast majority of economists agree that housing is becoming unaffordable for the average Aussie. What? Uh, yeah, and I mean, come on. With experts blaming wage growth and the extremely low home loan rates. Well, wage growth, we'll have a look here. You know, This is the chart that I keep showing, the bit of the meme now, where wage growth isn't up there. We can see the wage price index down to 2020. Yeah, I mean, there you go. It's just not increasing. The RBA's predictions aren't there. But hopefully now we're starting to see, well, with unemployment dropping down, and I'll bring that here, you can see with unemployment dropping down so drastically, we're going to start to see some pressure on wages. So maybe wages will drive up. And then the arguments that they're making here against, well, these housing affordability issues, they might evaporate. What do you reckon? We'll have to see, guys. So what is the solution to this one? And, well, I'm going to sound like a broken record. We need to find a way to get off our dependency of housing as a nation. Is it even possible? Will there even be the political will? If Labor got in and removed negative gearing, you know, and I mean really removed it, not the bullshit way they proposed it, they were going to keep it for the boomers and screw every generation that didn't have it. I, I would suggest you taper it out. So from now, there's only a decade left. So if you buy a property now, you've got a decade of negative gearing left. Then in a year's time, you've got nine years of negative gearing, eight years, everyone, even the oldies that have their houses. So you give people time to adjust. But, you know, if, is it going to happen? The, the people make arguments that uh, negative gearing is, you know, it's necessary to keep housing cheaper. But the problem is it drives up the cost of, housing as an investment product to minimize your tax more people are competing for it you know what would you rather have more people renting or more people owning don't answer that if you're from the world economic forum i'd love to see the creation of special economic regions to experiment with reduced government intervention in our lives but you know that that's probably anti-australian at the moment anyway guys let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Do you think we'll see a 16% property increase here in Australia? Or do you think it'll correct? We'll have to see. As always, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can sign up for any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can join Self Wealth or Stake using our referral links, Buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.